Amitabha, okay, look, apart from the fact that fantasy is meeting reality, are there any dangers for, do you think, a 90-year-old to go into space? Well, I think if he's in good shape, I think it, it's fine. Um, it can be dangerous for anybody if there is a mishap, for example. But uh, the first quick, quick, quick answer is there's, there are no dangers. Okay, but what about the G-force that the body experiences while the rocket is lifting off and leaving Earth and then the weightlessness? I mean, there must be some sort of impact on the body. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that is where it depends on how, how good a shape he is. I, I don't think they would have let him fly if he was not in good shape. I'm sure his vitals are fine, his pressure, his um, um, other facets. He's probably done well in the zero gravity tests on Earth. So I think there's a reason that he, he was cleared. And uh, I, I don't think that, that they would have cleared him if there was a danger. Yeah, look, I'm not an expert. When I watched him on TJ Hooker, he didn't look particularly fit. Look, anyway, it's a great achievement, isn't it? Absolutely. Because he's going to set a world record. Uh, what do you make of all of this kind of space tourism and what's going on at the moment with civilians blasting off into space? See, I think it's a very interesting period. So if you look at commercial aviation, when it started, nobody wanted to go there. It was very expensive. There was no customer base. Uh, there were no infrastructure. And we're kind of in that same state. But if you just look at what happened this year, uh, this is probably the fourth launch. Um, you have the world media fixated on this. Um, there are celebrities going in. And very soon, we are going to start talking about, you know, as celebrities go to these exotic vacations and private islands, we'd be talking about space. And then gradually, they are building the engineering infrastructure behind it. Um, they're trying to maybe see, see like a plane. When it comes, it can turn around and fly back in a couple of hours. Here it takes weeks. So things like that, they're, they're trying to, the, they're fixing the logistics issues. They're working on selling. They already have a pipeline of visitors. Um, so this is a very interesting stage. You know, when the internet happened, when social networking happened, nobody thought that there's a credible demand out there. And today it's a huge, huge industry. So SpaceX today is a $100 billion company. It's bigger than many, many companies, bigger than Toyota, per, perhaps. Um, so I think this is what is so fascinating is we are seeing a way a new industry is being born. We're seeing a future where we will have space as a destination in addition to places like Bora Bora and Mauritius. So we are in this very interesting crossroads. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, if I had the opportunity, if I could ever afford it, I would say yes immediately. William Shatner says he wants to see Earth. And that's what so many of these space tourists are saying, that they want to understand what Earth means to them as people and because of the climate crisis we're going through, how the planet is so precious, all of that. But in terms of the science that you're involved in, is this in any way part of a stepping stone towards bigger projects like a Mars mission? Absolutely. And see, here is the thing. If you think of all the space agency budgets put together, it's a few billion dollars. If you look at the aviation industry, it's a few trillion dollars. So it's a thousand times more. So a frontier really develops when the industry comes in. Government um, tax dollars really can get you only so far. So if, if more and more human beings were to go to space and um, remember, the SpaceX is also developing the space tourism capability, and they are building Starship, which will take 100 passengers to Mars at the cost of maybe half a million dollars. So, which, you know, if it came down maybe 50 times, then it's going to be affordable to people like you and me. So, so we are starting the, this, this might all happen, because you have two billionaires net worth for $400 billion, somehow they have taken it as a life's goal to make humans uh, interplanetary species. So this is all very interesting. And maybe it's just a matter of maybe 20 years and 30 years, this will be very commonplace. Yeah, Amitabha, you know, I really so much enjoy uh, hearing from you because of your area of expertise and how you help us understand that. But I think you've made a mistake there. You've categorized you and I in the same uh, pool. No. I think you've got slightly better connections if you want to go to space. I think probably just a phone call might fix it for you. Amitabha, we have to go. I'm really, really sorry. We've run out of time. But next time, come back, okay? Because you're just wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you so much, indeed. Amitabha Ghosh in Washington.